Turkish Airlines presents Business Africa. Greetings and a warm welcome to today's edition of Business Africa. I'm your host, Afolake Winloye. The top stories this week. On this episode, we navigate turbulent waters. The escalating Middle East conflict is having ripples across Africa. We explore the economic challenges, recovery setbacks, and the crucial role of the EU in ensuring stability. How does the departure of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso, three landlocked Sahel states, impact ECOWAS? In this episode, we look at the potential consequences on regional security. Can Africa stem its rise in methane emissions? Experts call for innovative finance and framework to address alarming surge in methane emissions. The Middle East conflict fueled by Uthi rebels disrupting Red Sea shipping route is casting a long economic shadow over Africa. As rising prices and supply chain disruptions grip nations already reeling from the pandemic, the urgency to de-escalate becomes paramount. The following report explores the economic domino effect on African economies. As the conflict in the Red Sea region continues to unfold, understanding Houthi objectives, the impact on trade and economies in Africa, and potential solutions becomes imperative for global and regional stability. African countries like Egypt, Ghana, Ethiopia, and Nigeria, which rely heavily on imports and have substantial trade deficits, are facing economic challenges due to rising prices caused by longer shipping times and higher costs. Although the rerouting of trade may benefit African producers temporarily, the overall impact on global supply chains and consumer prices remains worrisome. The International Monetary Fund warns that capital outflows in the Middle East and North Africa region may increase should investor sentiment experience a decline. Experts underscore that countries grappling with pandemic-induced debt are especially vulnerable when confronting escalating fiscal challenges without sufficient safeguards against potential shocks arising from the Red Sea crisis. And escalating shipping costs amplify food insecurity risks and poverty, hindering the recovery of these countries as financial flows shrink. Alfred Alguel, Senior Fellow, Foreign Policy from John Hopkins University, joins us for more on that report. Thanks for making out time for this interview. Now, what are the Uthis really aiming to gain from escalating this conflict? Is there a strong commercial reason here? Houthis have multiple reasons uh, for this, uh, mainly uh, political, uh, the fact that they want to be taken seriously, they want to show their... Uh, their presence, their strength, that they can even challenge a country like the United States and Israel. Uh, they're also a part of a larger uh, strategy that uh, ties together a number of non-state actors in the region uh, against uh, Israel and against what Israel is doing in Gaza. Uh, on a local level, it also strengthened their positions greatly within Yemen against uh, what is uh, called uh, the internationally recognized government. They also have uh, probably a commercial interest, although it's not at the forefront at the moment. Uh, you can, for example, they can uh, easily uh, start charging for passage through the Red Sea. So they have multiple reasons, but they took advantage essentially of the situation that is happening now in Gaza. The World Bank warns of surging energy prices, slower growth and higher inflations as the threat arises. Now, how would this affect African economies and trade? The, the cost is enormous. I mean, the increase in insurance costs for shipping, uh, the increase in, in the trade routes. I mean, you know, if you cannot cross through the Red Sea, you have to go all the way through the Horn of Africa. Uh, all of these add an enormous amount of cost to everything uh, that is coming from from uh, the east. Uh, so uh, the the cost is is very very large, uh, and that's why I said that they can extract a price uh, in exchange for letting ships go safe. Now, will the escalating conflict have far negative economic impact on economies trying to recover from the pandemic? Precisely, yes. 
um, the World Bank predicts a, 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 an, a, an enormous increase uh, in, in uh, prices. It also basically restricts countries from uh, the ability to manage their internal fiscal policies. Uh, for example, if, if you have an increase in inflation across the board, usually uh, in economics, um, anywhere in the world, the first thing a government will do is increase the, uh, the, the interest rates uh, to try to combat uh, inflation. Um, that becomes a very difficult uh, equation for low-income countries and countries who are suffering already uh, from serious economic uh, uh, crises. What should key players do to de-escalate the situation? I think African countries, if they put, uh, if they adopt uh, a unified position, they can emerge as the front runner of uh, mediation and conflict resolution. I think that the AU can deal with the Houthis directly, can deal with uh, any non-state actor uh, directly without being incumbent by, you know, delegation of these kind of terminologies that the United States and Europe use at will whenever they don't like somebody. Uh, whether even uh, uh, you can also play a role beyond just Africa, but even in uh, Gaza, for example, where uh, African nations have always been a great supporter of Palestinians throughout the years. I mean, we've just seen South Africa uh, taking a lead uh, in, in the International Court of Justice on behalf of the Palestinians. I think African countries have a lot to gain from that and have a voice uh, that basically we we will take the lead when it comes to, to, to conflicts that are within our range. Thanks so much for those insights. Thank you. Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso are leaving ECOWAS citing dissatisfaction with the organization's inability to enhance security and sovereignty. The departure raises concerns about economic challenges and poses a significant threat to regional security. Today, the need for a diplomatic solution to prevent further fractures within this regional economic community is crucial. We have expert insight in the following reports. Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso have severed ties with ECOWAS, accusing the organization of failing to enhance their national aspirations. The departure marks a significant blow to the 50-year-old regional body, raising concerns about economic challenges and hindrances to cross-border trade there's also concern that the exit of the three countries poses a threat to regional security, particularly in the terrorism-prone Sahel. The sub-region accounted for 43% of all deaths from terrorism in 2022. West Africa has major security challenges in terms of terrorism, uh, in terms of maritime security in the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, we have issues around unregular migration, drug trafficking, human trafficking, and all of that. And to have a comprehensive regional security uh, framework you, in West Africa, all states have to be involved, especially these Sahelian states that are, they are transit states for uh, illegal migrants, for drugs, for uh, small and light weapons that are being smuggled, and even, of course, primarily ter terrorism also. So we cannot talk about the West African regional security framework without this, with these countries. And, and I, I, I would actually caution that it is going to also affect them also because uh, that's them being the AES because they also would need a, a lot of uh, support from coastal states to deal with the, the security challenge that, that they face. So overall, it is better for both sides to sit together and resolve this conflict and prevent the fracture of a, 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 perhaps one of the most successful uh, regional economic communities in the continent. The ECOWAS treaty requires a one-year notice period before a member state formally exits the community. The implications on freedom of movement of goods remain uncertain, raising concerns about potential border issues and visa systems. Amid a concerning surge in methane emissions across Africa, experts are calling on African leaders to swiftly establish African methane abatement bonds. The urgency is highlighted in the groundbreaking report emphasizing the need for innovative financing. The CAR-based advisory group AfriCatalyst pressingly urges African leaders to establish an African Methane Abatement Bond AMAB framework. This appeal coincides with the release of a crucial report 
highlighting a 2% annual increase in methane emissions across Africa from 1990 to 2022, contributing 14% globally. Notably, 19 African countries, including Nigeria, Sudan, DRC and Egypt, are responsible for 80% of those emissions. The report emphasizes the need for immediate global action to address this environmental crisis. Despite nations outlining national determined contributions and DCs, a lack of adequate financing hampers climate goals with only 2% of global climate financing allocated to methane abatement last year. Sub-Saharan Africa received a mere 6% of global methane financing. Experts propose collaboration among the top 19 African methane emitters to unlock additional funding leveraging partners like the European Union. The report calls for innovative solutions, including increased domestic revenue mobilization, philanthropic funds, and recycling special drawing rights, SDRs. And that's a wrap on this episode. Thank you for joining us on Business Africa. For more captivating business stories and news, stay tuned to African News and africanews.com. Business Africa was presented by Turkish Airlines.